What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Magica 2 Expert. Oh, yeah, guys. So this episode, at least to start off with today, I wanted to upgrade our sword. Now, while we're in the twilight in the last episode, uh, we did ding our sword, so we had one more modifier. So we we're able to put reinforced four on there. But you can see we already have sharpest est, which means we've already put the maximum amount of sharpness upgrades that we can on the sword. Yeah. So the only thing we could do now is use a better material. And since we have reinforced four on there, I feel pretty good about upgrading it to a material that it eh, might be a little bit more expensive for us. Well, I guess expensive in general. Uh, so we're gonna upgrade to the evil infused uh, sword blade. Yeah. Uh, so I was looking at the different materials we have. We got this evil infused broad ax head earlier on. And I decided that we weren't gonna use that because chopping down a tree with that just seems kind of silly. Yeah. So anyway, we're melting this down. We are going to turn it into a sword blade. And the reason why we're doing that is because it has an attack of 13 versus wherever the cactus one is right here, the one that we've been using for forever, which has an attack of 3.4. So when we swap out that blade, we should get an automatic 10 more attack on our sword. So we should be going from like a 15.74 to around a 25, right? So that's what I'm looking at doing here. So we have melted evil infused iron. Mm -hmm. We don't have a sword cast. So that's the thing that we got to do. Let's grab some, I guess, cobblestone is fine. And then we'll make one of these things. We don't even have a pattern for it. Okay. Let's come over here. We'll make a pattern. We don't have any blank patterns. What the heck? Blank patterns. Uh, blank pattern. Where did all of our blank patterns go? I have no idea. Oh, we got 16 more of them now, so we should be able to do this. And sword blade pattern. Yeah, I think we got that from a reward, so we never actually made a sword to start with. So there's that guy, and then we're going to need uh, aluminum brass, which we have. Awesome. We'll throw that in here, get that melting down. That melts a lot faster than what we were doing before. Yeah, and then we can just place it into here. Now... I don't want the max output of five going on because we're going to cast out one sword blade. I don't want it to make five of them and have to remelt those down. I just want to pour the stuff in here, make one sword blade, and then swap out the thing for the ingots, and we'll store the rest of the evil infused as ingots. So anyway, here's the molten aluminum brass. And pour that in here. That should make the mold right away. Awesome. And we'll start pouring the evil infused in here. All right, swap that out for the ingot cast. We can put this back in here and take that out. Yep, and then we'll just turn all the evil infused remaining into ingots. Awesome. So there's our evil infused sword blade. Place that there with this here. And okay, so it takes us to an attack of 21. Not quite as high as I was thinking, but I guess that at yeah, 21.46. I guess that makes sense. The cactus does have prickly, which does add to the damage some of the time. Maybe that's what's taken into account on the attack damage here. I don't know. But anyway, uh, getting one that does 21.46 attack damage, that's a full 10 hearts, 10 and a half hearts every single hit. I think that's pretty good. So we're going to do it. Um, so, yeah, we've been repairing that with cactus previously. Uh, now it's going to require us to have the evil ingots in order to repair it. And those you can do with, uh, I believe it's nether brick surrounded by a source block of lava and you toss gold into it. We've done that before in series past, but it's been a little bit of time since I've last done it. I guess we could check it out. Do we have, we do have plenty of nether brick here. Let's make sure that is exactly how that happens. Gold and we got plenty of lava. Do we have anything in the system? Lava? Um, no. Uh, we do have some buckets, though, so we'll grab a bucket of lava. Okay, let's go check this out and make sure this is still the way it works. It might have changed for this mod pack. I don't even know if that's configurable. No idea. So we'll find out. Let's use a shovel. Cool. So it's supposed to just be uh, nether bricks surrounded by lava like so, and then you toss in gold. Yep, demon. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. That's demon. Not evil infused. The evil infused, oh my goodness, I got that completely confused. <laughs> uh, evil infused, yeah, that's iron with a nether star. Ah, so if we wanted to do the demon, let's see, demon sword blade. What does that give us? That gives us an attack of 11. 
Okay, so I think what we did was fine anyway. Yeah, I was thinking this was <laughs> the demon stuff. Oh, my mistake. Well, there's a full half a stack of demon ingots. So no, that is not how you make the evil infused. You need nether stars for that. Yep, completely forgot. Uh, Where did all my dirt go? I guess it's in here somewhere. There we go. That all grew back together. Well, either way, our sword is much better than what it was before. We'll be able to do... We should be able to one-shot Enderman, I think, with it now, right? Mm, I don't remember, actually. But the uses for these evil-infused ingots... Yeah, that's for, like, the ultimate speed upgrades. Looks like it's also for this ultimate crafting. But by the time we get to here, I'm sure we'll be able to be killing... Um, wither bosses and... All of that fairly easily, so I'm not really worried about it at all. Uh, that lava bucket will place the lava back there and place the bucket away. Cool. All right, guys. So last episode, we kind of looked at this item repairer that I set up with one chest to push uh, damage items into the repair, get them repaired, and then put them back into the chest and pull out another one. Well, that seemed to work, but the problem is it was pulling out fully repaired items. And it was just kind of like pushing them back and forth and back and forth and then not doing anything. So I switched this to a two chest setup. So we're just extracting out of this chest into the repairer. And then we're extracting out of the repairer on the brown channel. And that's going over here for storage. Mm -hmm. That way we can take some of these armors and things that we're getting from our mob farm, throw them in there, and then just get them repaired. And then come back to a chest full of completely repaired items. Now, things that we should... Uh, take into consideration with what we're doing here. Uh, we really need to start filtering this stuff out. I would like to keep armor that's valuable and toss armor that's not. And then like all the mob drops, I wanna do something with. They're just taking up chest space here. Yeah, I don't think we need any of the leather stuff. If we look at the uses for leather, we can turn it into like some other random things, but I'm not really entirely sure that we need that for anything. Like we can turn leather into iron, but we're already getting iron drops, so is it worth keeping it for that? I, I don't know. Um, I definitely don't want to spend the resources to repair it because I think it's just, yeah, just straight up leather or it's actually cloth, which comes from string. Yeah, so string can turn into these woven cottons, which turn into this. So the, uh, the leather armor is essentially worthless. We have no reason to keep it. But yeah, I would like to start throwing away things that we don't need, like iron, swords, shields, bows, uh, the leather armor. We'll probably keep the iron and potentially the gold. The gold, if we look at the uh, uses for that, does turn into diamonds. So it might be worth holding on to this stage. I don't know. Maybe it's not even worth holding on to the iron if we're just keeping the gold, right? Things to, to think about anyway. But uh, we have so much clutter in these chests that is very hard for us to get more stuff in here. So let's start setting up a way that we can take the items we want, put it into our system, our applied energistic system, and then the things that we don't want, we can throw away, and then everything else at that point goes into these chests. All right, guys, so I made a bunch of these filters from Extra Utilities too. I think this is probably the best way for us to filter out the items that we want and don't want. Yeah, so pretty much what we're going to do. Uh, we have filters set up for uh, all the different items that we want to keep from mob drops. So like iron nuggets, gold nuggets. We already have places for that in our storage. Uh, charcoal, emerald. These are things that are their mobs are dropping. Uh, glowstone as well. But yeah, we want to keep these items. And we already have storage for them. Things we don't have storage for is all the mob drops like arrows, bones, strings. So we're going to figure out a place for that. Uh, then... We had to overflow onto a second one of these things. We want to keep pretty much all of these different items that they're dropping, especially the Inferium and the Dimlet parcels. Uh, so I combined both of these into one filter, and this filter contains both of those other two filters. Yep. So you can put filters inside filters, and this one will filter both this stuff. So yeah, that's very, very nice if you haven't seen this before. So I just set up another filter here. Uh, this is for the armor stuff that we don't want, or at least that I don't see a reason to keep. Iron sword, stone sword, shields, and bows. We have this set to ignore NBT, so if there's enchantments on it, it doesn't matter. It's just going to throw them away. Uh, we have it ignore meta, because all of these things are different metadata. That's the durability. Yep, so it doesn't matter what their durability is. 
and then of course ignore or dictionary that's on by default so we're whitelisting all of these different items um so again the leather cap we can turn that into gold armor and then the gold can turn into diamond um or i think the leather turns into the iron and then the iron can turn into the gold and then the gold turns into diamond anyway so i was looking at this different stuff here the faraday armor if we look at the uses for that uh that turns into the nano suit but we're just getting nano suit armor so is there really a reason for us to keep this there's no other uses for that stuff and the nano suit can turn into uh the flux and fuse which we're also getting as a drop is there any real reason to keep the nano suit i don't know but uh they're all going to be stacking since they all come uncharged and uh, same thing with this so i think that's going to be fine uh and then eventually that all turns into quantum suit and I have seen quantum suit body armor drop. So this is like the top end stuff. And this is the stuff that we need in order to make the uh, wyvern stuff. So anyway, we're going to be throwing away some of these other things that aren't necessarily useful. Uh, this boron nitrate stuff. I said that we're probably going to have to go into nuclear craft to make that. I did see in this first chest here, we do have a boron nitrate chest plate. So it looks like given enough time and killing enough mobs, we might not even have to get into that part of nuclear craft, which would be pretty awesome. But anyway, now that we have these filters, I think the next step is to get these things hooked up, go through all of the stuff that we have here, start putting that where it needs to go, and see what we're left off with. I can see already we have an Invar sword. I probably want to throw that away as well. But we can expand on these filters as we go. So pretty much what we're going to want to do is leave this small storage crate the way it is we're going to want to extract off of there with our white list of all of the mob drops and we're going to want that to go into our applied energistic system and then we are going to want to uh i guess blacklist the items that are on that list that are going up into our applied energistic system blacklist those items and whitelist all of the well i guess no let's let's back up we're going to whitelist all of the mob drops going into a plight energistic system. We're going to whitelist all the items that we don't want going into a trash can. And then everything else is going to be blacklisting those items and our armor items that we don't want. Right? Okay. So everything else should end up in these chests. And we're going to whitelist those items into a plight energistics and the armor that we don't want into a trash can. Okay. So I need to go get myself an interface. I need to get myself a trash can. And then I kind of have to rearrange some things and get the Ender IO piping going and swap out the Ender IO stuff that we have there. So give me a moment here. Let me get this stuff sorted and we will be right back. Okay, so here we go. We have our small storage crate, which is going to be receiving items from our mob crusher. Yeah, mob crusher. So the items are to come into here. So off of this transfer node, we have this filter that's going to be whitelisting all of the items that we don't want to have in our system into a trash chest. Now I'm doing a trash chest because it's not instantly deleted. You can, oh crap, grab that item before it completely gets deleted. So pretty much the way the trash chest works is items get filled up into here and they're still there. You can still take them out. But when another item goes in, I think it picks up a random spot in here and then whatever item that is, like it overwrites that item in there. Anyway, so you have like 27 spots that will be deleted, but it gives you a chance to like not instantly delete it. So you have a chance of getting whatever that item is back. If that makes sense. Anyway, so yeah, we're going to be taking items that are on this list here and throwing them into the trash chest. So we can hook that up right now and make sure this thing works. So there's nothing in here. The only thing that's in our chest right now, our small storage crate, is some bones. So bones are not being deleted. Uh, we could throw in like this Faraday armor and the iron armor and make sure that's going where it needs to go. And it looks like that is working correctly. Yep. Uh, the bones aren't going in there. And something that we wanted to keep, like, I don't know, this tough alloy, that is going... Oh, that went to this correct one over here. Let's try a nightly plate. So that's not going anywhere. And if we remove this, it goes to where we want that to go. Okay. So I think we're pretty much set. Now this one up here, uh, this is all of the mob drops and stuff that we want to keep 
and put back into the applied energistic system. And I was testing that out and it looks like that works pretty good as well. So we have bones, we have glowstone dust. If I take the bones out, we get more bones, then we get glowstone. So that seems to be doing exactly what we want. And of course, if we put in uh, some of this different armor, one gets pulled out and put into this slot, but does not get put into this one. Okay, so all the filtering seems to be correct at this point. Now, in order to get this one to work, this is the remaining items. We had to take out each one of these filters here. These are the ones that have the items that we're trying to keep. We had to take these out, right click on them, set them to blacklist, and then put them into another filter. And then I set them back to whitelist and put them back in here. So I had to do that with both of those. And then the one that's going to the trash chest, I also had to set that to blacklist, add that to this other filter over here. So this one, um, we have nothing in here. Take a look, right click on this. So this is set to blacklist and it's got three separate blacklist filters in it. So everything that's not on these is gonna head over into these chests. Yeah, it's kind of a complicated thing and I definitely wanted to get that all figured out before I brought you guys back because that's just gonna be a lot of, hmm, why doesn't this work? Yeah, that's not very cool. Anyway, uh, so now that we got that all set up, we need a spot to store all those mob drops. Now, previously over here, we set up a storage drawer network, right? And we said that the drawer controller can see up to 12 blocks in any direction. So if we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that's still within the 12, right? And that also means it can see 12 away from it. So if we go around the corner, yeah, so that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. This is the furthest it should be able to see behind it. Okay, so what we need to do is get these drawers connected to those. And that's just a simple matter of either placing drawers behind or you can use uh, trim, which we have not made in this mod pack yet. So if we search for trim, we can see oak trim. Uh, what do we need? Is that planks? Planks. Those are fast to saw up. Let's just make a hundred of them real quick. Okay, so yeah, we can do that. Probably eight is more than enough. So trims, uh, they connect one block to another in the storage drawers, but they don't contain anything. They're either for aesthetics or for doing like what we're doing here and just linking drawers together. Eventually I'll dig over to where we need to be. Oh, I guess I haven't dug all the way behind all these drawers. Okay, here we go. So really, the only thing you need to do is trim here, trim there, trim there, and now they're all connected. That's it. Very, very, oops, that's not what I want. That's not what I meant to do, that I had torches there, I don't. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So these drawers are now connected through these trims to those drawers over there. So now, whenever we put stuff in and out of the applied energistic system, it should be trying to put things into here and take things out of here first. So let's take a look at bones. We have one bone in there because I set the pattern earlier. Those are all locked and each one of those do have the void upgrade on there. So if we look at, what, what am I typing? A <laughs> bone. Yeah, let's take all the bones out of the system. I think we could pro, can you put those into a compacting drawer? I know you can do those. Anyway, let's put all these back in here. Now if we go down and take a look, they should all be in this drawer. I haven't tested this, so. Yeah, they are all there, perfect. Okay, so that's working exactly how we want it. So any of these items that get put into the system will go here, including our Inferium. Yep, so I think we should be pretty much good to go to hook all this up. Now, the only other thing that we might wanna take into consideration is the speed in which these transfer nodes transfer items. Now, for the mob drops, I put in a stack upgrade because, give me up here. Yeah, because if you get a bunch of bones at once, it's gonna be really slow doing one item at a time. So you wanna be able to do like the full stack. So we'll speed that up. So we'll place that here. Ooh, and that connects. Okay, so we gotta figure out how to disconnect that. I, I can't remember, is it that you use a stick? Or do you have to use a wrench? Do we have any sticks? Uh, well, let's just see, do we have a wrench? Can I wrench that? Okay, I guess it does work with the wrench. 
It used to be you had to use a stick on this <laughs> back in 1.7, but I guess they have changed that. Okay, so now if we take some of these mob drops and we throw those into here, they get extracted stack at a time and they are going into our applied energistic system. That is perfect. That is exactly what we wanted to see happen. Uh, so the rest of this stuff, we could probably, hmm, how do I, how do I want to do this? Uh, let's take this stuff, not that. Actually, where would that go? Would that go into these chests? Yeah, it would. Interesting. Okay. Um, yeah, so we want to get these chests all hooked up. Now, unfortunately, the way this is set up, there's not really a good way for us to have it go to this chest first and this chest and this chest. Unless we do transfer node into this one and then a transfer node into this one and then a transfer node into this one. And then the last one will always have the most amount of items. I don't know if that's the best way or not, but it doesn't really matter. For now, we're just going to hook these all up just so we have large amounts of storage here. Um, and I think that is pretty much all we have to do. Now, I do want to take all of these items and run them back through. So we'll just put all this stuff in here. We should start seeing more things end up over into our trash chest and like any mob drops that we put in here should end up in our applied energistic system. Yep, so I think we are pretty much well on our way to getting all of this stuff sorted. I'll grab some more of that. Yeah, that's a, another problem, I guess. Like items that are <laughs> going to be going back into here will be in the top, so I can't just space click all of those items out. So I'll have to drag them out of the chest here. But yeah, this will be a nice, easy way for us to filter out all the items that we want from the items that we don't want. And it'll save us a lot more space in our chest here. We'll definitely be able to see more easily the items that we are looking for. All right, guys. So I've been watching this for a while, making sure everything is going just fine. And it definitely appears like everything is working as intended. Now, we did get the rare bat spawn in there. I guess I was further enough away from it to allow them to spawn. Uh, but yeah, we got some bats wings in there, but I don't really think that's too much of an issue. Now I've been taking a lot of the items that we want out of the chests here and, uh, taking them to be repaired. What's this? Enchanted rapier. We got ourselves a refined glowstone battle sign. We also had, what was this other? One? Yeah. A terra steel cleaver. Lots of random mob drops. So that's pretty cool. But anyway, like all the uh, good stuff, like the nano suit, the quantum suit, the flux infused, all of that kind of stuff, I've been taking out of the chests and putting over into our applied energistic system. That stuff stacks straight away. Uh, we could also add that directly to the mob drops. So it just goes right into here. So if we search for a quantum suit, you can see we've got quite a few pieces of it so far. The nano suit we've gotten a lot of and the flux uh, infuse stuff we've gotten a, a decent amount of as well. So yeah, that's kind of cool. The other armor that we want to save that uh, we need to repair, I've been bringing over here and putting it through our item repairer and it has been repairing these things. Yep, it's just grabbing random pieces here and there, uh, putting it through the repairer and then this is where they're ending up. So all these items, uh, as long as the enchantments are the same, they should all stack in the applied energistic system and not take up a stupid amount of space like they normally would if we were just dumping them in there because of all the different damage values of them. So yeah, now we can take these and put them into our AE system and everything's gonna be just fine. So a thing I was just noticing a little bit ago, if we search for our uranium supply, we're down to 550 of them. I think at the beginning of today's episode, we were around 700. Um, I did swap out our void or miner uh, with the void resource miner. So we're getting a lot more terracotta and all that kind of stuff. Really, I'm looking for mica. So we have this for the future. So we're collecting that as well. Um, but that got me thinking, yeah, we are chewing through our uranium pretty quickly. And if we run completely out of that, we're going to be dead in the water, literally. Um, so yeah, swapping it over to the void resource miner is making it use a lot less power. I think it's only, well, it's using 1100, as you can see right there on the screen, but I think the void ore miner was using something like 4,000 or was it even high? No, it was using like 20,000. 
I can't remember. Anyway, it was a really high number because of all the speed modifiers that we have here, right? Um, so I was looking at ways that we could improve our fuel efficiency here. And there's ways that you can change the... Uh, yeah, the reactor here. I was like, what is this thing called? The extreme reactor. Uh, in previous packs, there's ways that you can use like... Oh, I can't even remember the name of it. Um, I think that's in here, but I don't think we can craft it. What is that thing called? Yeah, the Rednet port, Legacy. So there is no Rednet support. There's no recipe for this item. And this was pretty cool because Rednet can do a lot finer amounts than Redstone. Redstone can only do 0 to 15. I think this can do all the way to 255 or something. But anyway, if you set uh, the Rednet out to be like the amount that's inside the reactor and you put that into a uh, change the control rods to that same percent, like you can set the control rods to be whatever the percent of power is and then it regulates the power inside the reactor much better. Well, I just made a program very, very similar to that. I just edited the program that we had here and it's now taking the amount of power that's stored in here, the energy buffer, and dividing it by the amount that it can store so you can see it's coming up with that same percent there, 91% or whatever. And it's setting the control rods to be that percent. Yeah. If we come in here, we uh, terminate this. I can edit startup. Uh, yeah. Went through here. I just, I left a lot of the old stuff in here that we're not really using anymore. But the thing that I changed was this check power. So we're making a percent variable. And we're saying reactor get energy status and we're looking at the energy stored so that's getting the energy that's in the reactor and then we're divide whoop. <laughs> then we're dividing it by reactor get energy stats energy capacity so that's the amount that it can hold we're dividing the amount stored by the amount that it's possibly possible to hold and then we're timesing that by 100 so we get like a, a regular number instead of a a percent a uh, decimal number uh, then we're taking the reactor we're seeing all control rods to that percent we're doing math that floor to get rid of the extra decimal places after the uh, main percent that we're looking for so anyway I mean it's very simple three liner actually I guess it's just like two lines that I added here and I removed a whole bunch of the other stuff um, but yeah that's getting us to that point where we uh let's restart this where it's getting us to the point pretty much where we can regulate our reactor a lot easier and not have to worry about burning through as much fuel all the time but we still need a renewable way to get uranium the only way that we've been doing that so far is by me taking gravel and sifting i think on an iron mesh in order to get it let's take a look at that uranium uh piece what is that what it's called yeah the ore piece oh no it's a uh, crushed end stone has to be done on the iron stiffened mesh and you get a 30 percent chance at that anyway i kind of feel like we should look at the automated um automated sifting for this and maybe start working towards getting that going if we look at creato or how do you pronounce that what is it yeah creatio maybe creatio um there is the auto sifter and that requires you to use the water wheel things. And we've made these before in a previous mod pack. They're really not that expensive. It's cobblestone and wood for the stone gears. And then it is stone rods, which is just more cobblestone. So we can auto craft all that stuff to make these stone axles. So the axles you can put in a, a straight line, right? Uh, and I think you can add up to, I think it's 20 or 30 water wheels onto that axle and they will power the axle and power the auto sifter. And then you just have to put water over the water wheels to spin the thing, right? So that's pretty much how that works. I think I'm going to go ahead. Oh, wait, I didn't, did I look at the recipe for the auto sifter? That requires two pistons, two hoppers, more of the stone gears and a stone axle. Yeah, that's all pretty simple stuff. I think I'll set up some recipes for that real quick. And we'll look at getting that thing hooked up. We'll probably move our sieves from here to, I think, yeah, this room right next to where our react, or not reactor, void or miner. Well, I guess the reactor's here too. 
I think we're going to set it here. That way we can put the water wheels into the mountain back here. Yeah, that way it'll be kind of hidden. Although we might be running into this stuff, but if we do, we'll just have to rearrange it. I think it'll be just fine. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get that auto sifter set up and we'll be right back. All right, guys, so we got the auto sieving thing kind of set up. Let me show you how this thing works. So you make yourself an auto sifter, right? And then you get a place that's directly underneath your sieving operation. When you do, you can tell you have it hooked up, right? Because like the graphics underneath all the sieves uh, are different. Anyway, when you place it down, you have one side that has an axle input. Yep, and then all the other sides don't. And the way you want to run your axles is by clicking on here and running them away. Don't go from the opposite side and think that I'll connect because it will not. Because what you'll end up with is like a receiver touching a receiver and it just doesn't work that way. So you have to go from the auto sifter away from it. Yeah. Anyway, so that's just one little thing that can get you hung up. It's gotten me hung up in the past on these things. Uh, so yeah, the way you place it, the way you're facing, it, the uh, receiving part of the axles will be facing towards you. So, yep, so that connects and you can see it adds in all these little wood things below. Mm -hmm. So everything's connected right. So I ran the axles this way and then starting on this one, I started placing the water wheels. The water wheels replace axles. The axles are just to bring the, uh, I guess the power from your water wheels to where your sieving operation is. And I did this 21 long. I don't know if that's too many. I honestly don't. But, uh, you know, we can do this. So we're going to do this. So each one of these that you put water on uh, increases the rotational speed up until a certain point. And at some point, I think it uh, gets slower. I'm not entirely sure. Can we see it visually? Yeah, if you go all the way down here to the end, you can see... These last ones down here are moving really, really slowly. So they're not having that much of an effect on it as the ones that are closer. Yeah. So they're all getting a little bit slower and slower. So at some point, probably 21 is too many. Maybe 15 or 16 is where you'd want to be for, uh, you know, your best bang for the buck or whatever. Uh, but these are rather inexpensive. It's cobblestone. It's wood. Who cares? Like, if you get... A little too much in there. It doesn't really matter. Um, let me go ahead and close that in. We're awfully close to the, the ceiling here. Fill that in. Yeah, so we don't need to look at this anymore. So we can just kind of block that in like it doesn't matter. Like it never happened. Okay, now you can see that our sieves are automatically shaking. Yeah, that's really cool. I guess that's one of the downsides of doing this is you get a hole in your floor. So I guess we could put some quartz underneath it or move the sieves down a block. But then I think the animation kind of makes them clip into the blocks. Then you get Z fighting. <sighs> anyway. <laughs> so at this point, I think in order to get this going, you have to pipe in gravel or whatever you want into the auto sifting mechanism. So if we come over here and we look at... Oh, I, what was it for the uranium? It was the crushed endstone. Oh, I guess we have that in here. If we have any remaining endstone, we have one crushed endstone. Okay, so let's do something else. Let's do gravel just to kind of get this going. And I think you need like to hopper it in. I can't remember exactly how this works. But anyway, we're running long in this episode at this point. Uh, I just wanted to get this thing hooked up so we have the ability to do this in the future so yeah i think you just take it and you can hopper or pipe into the side of this thing so we put gravel in there yeah you can see stuff's happening and then that's being filled up into the all the slots and we are automatically getting this stuff now it would be faster obviously if we could pipe in faster than what a hopper pipes in but yeah you can see we are collecting all this stuff automatically now which is pretty fantastic uh, yeah, we will swap this out for like a chest and then we will pipe in stacks at a time. Yeah, this will be so much better. But anyway, you guys get the idea how this works. I might lower this in the floor. I haven't decided yet. But yeah, anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.